Welcome back to First Rounds on Me, the podcast about dating, relationships, love, sex, and everything in between. I'm Steve, along with my co-host and First Rounds on Me founder and CEO, Joe Feminella. If you're completely new to First Rounds on Me, we're a dating app that cuts out all the small talk and encourages you to actually go on real dates so you can create a real, genuine connection in person rather than trying to through a phone screen. If you haven't downloaded From yet, go to the App Store, create your profile, find yourself a date, fall in love, and make some beautiful babies. If we're not in your city yet, we're working to get there as soon as possible, so hang tight and thanks for your patience. If you're loving the app, please consider leaving us a rating and review on the App Store. We love getting your feedback and it really helps us grow. If you have a From success story, we'd love to hear all about it and feature you on our social media. Today's guest is Jaden Boysen. Jaden got his start as a performer and entertainer in the musical Tarzan and on a TV show called The Peppercorns. He was a front man of the boy band New District and is now a DJ, producer, and songwriter. Jaden, welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thanks, welcome, Jaden. It it's been a pleasure getting to know you for the last 10 minutes. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope we can get to know each other a bit more and talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so I always start with this. How are you doing? Like a legitimate, like uh, not when people just say, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm actually doing very, very good right now. Um, my life has been changing a lot. Actually, I just moved officially to America. I got my artist visa, got a new house. So it's been going very, very, very good. And I'm still waking up every morning and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And I'm very, very thankful. So I'm happy to be here. Congratulations. It's amazing. Man. Yeah, congrats That's and awesome. welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Well, one thing I want to start with is I think... Um, I think there's a lot of cross. Well, first of all, let's start with the billboard. Times Square billboard. How yes. does that feel? I mean, shit, it's crazy. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's insane. To, to be honest, when I woke up and my manager and my team were calling me and we're like, yeah, we're on Times Square. I was like, why aren't we on Times Square? I want to see this in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it's it's insane. I mean, uh, we have the next singles coming out in, in four weeks. Another single after that, they're going to go on Times Square again. And all this is still insane for me to realize it's actually happening and, and I'm, I'm very excited that's awesome so, so you said you've been doing this for a long time right now when you first started get, going down this path did you foresee yourself getting this popular and successful or has each step been you know like a dream come true kind of it's been a, it's been a, it's been a crazy journey to be honest because I started when I was nine years old in, in a musical in Hamburg and Taza and, and then from that I did uh, acting I was one of the most popular TV shows in, in Germany and for me it was never about like oh I want to do this it just all of a sudden happened all of the time everything uh, after that I, I got casted for a boy band in America so I moved here when I was 15 I was here for two and a half years then after that the boy band broke up and uh, <laughs> I went back to Germany you know I was like on a, on a low I was like after all this I was like wow started producing made music then I met my manager he got me into DJing and all of this just like all happened without me really doing oh i want to do this how do i get there it just happened you organically know? And yeah. organically and, and i never really planned anything i think the universe has that all planned you know and it will, if it's supposed to happen it will happen that's awesome so so essentially kind of you just fell into this passion and you liked it so much that you just kept riding the wave and you're not forcing anything you're just letting it come to you you like what you're doing you're yeah. just happy doing it and it's yeah i'm, I'm very happy you know with, with everything that I do, I, I love it, you know? I don't wake up and be like, oh, I have to work today. No, I I don't want to go to bed, you know? I, I stay in the studio till 3, 5 a.m., you know? And, and I love DJing. If, even if I don't have a show, I'm like, oh, I want to DJ now again. I DJ, I make music, I wake up, I have my best friends around me, my whole team, you know? It's like it's like entourage. Yeah, you know? dude, it's, <laughs> it's so crazy because, you know, when you talk to people who are doing what they actually love to do, it's so relatable, right? Because... Yeah. You know, I, out of Steve and I, I started that path first where I started this app and I became so passionate about it where every single day it wasn't work, right? And you just wake up and when you're going to sleep, like I can't wait to wake up and see what the next day <laughs> is. And he was kind of slowly integrating into that. And now he's full time with the app and he gets to see like, oh, every day is so exciting and it's not work. And I get to work with my best friend. And it's like, sometimes you pinch yourself and think, is this real life? Like, how did I get so lucky to just not have a mundane nine to five job that I hate waking yeah, up to. Yeah, it's crazy. You know? I mean, like, that's what I said when I moved to America. I was like, this is insane. Like who gets the opportunity to move from a little town to from Germany to America and live here with their best friends and, and have an amazing team around them and do what they love. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, don't you ever think like sometimes 
you're like, shit, I hope, I hope not that it's a dream, but you hope, you hope like, uh, it doesn't run out, right? Like shit, like maybe they're going to figure out that my life's not supposed to be this way. And then I'm going to have to have a real life as opposed to like, no, like this is yeah. where it's supposed to be. You're, you're doing what you're doing. You're doing your thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, I do think about that, you know, but I try not to because I, I, I'll, I go with love attraction sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, I try not to think about it, but of course, if you think about it, it's scary, you know, oh, I don't want to go back. I love it here, you know, but you know, I do everything in, in that I possibly can to, to be here, you know, and get the success because my music, showing my music and being on stage and get an energy from 10,000 people, there's nothing like it. Like I've done everything and this is insane. Like there's nothing like it. It's an incredible feeling and doing that just makes me so happy and I will do everything to make that Yeah. How it is right now. And that's got to be the coolest rush because when you talk about like sports or like music concerts, getting a whole arena of people to all be cheering and like in unison about the same thing. I think it's one of like the most spectacular things in, in life. Like, did you ever see um, when the, the movie Queen? Yeah. When uh, Freddie Mercury's doing the thing in front of the yeah. whole audience and like hundreds of thousands of people are singing his song. It gives me like the chills to think like one person and music to get all of these people to just like be on this positive wavelength. You feel like God, like right? honestly, like you're like the people up to talk to people. They were like, you get a God complex at some point. Like, it's like, you know, people always say like, oh, Justin Bieber went like da 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 and like all these people are so arrogant. Like you honestly, what are you supposed to do? I think like, hopefully I don't get that way, you know, but I'm trying not to I have a good team around me who will probably protect me. But you know, it's, it's, it's hard because there's so much attention, so much energy. There's like, It's like a drug. Like you feel like you're on drugs. You get like hyped. You get like, oh my god! Like it's crazy. It's insane that you can't even describe the feeling of it. Like I just played a show on Saturday and I had all my best friends with uh, with me on stage. And I'm like, oh my god! This was the most crazy, insane thing I've ever seen. I was like, yeah, because it's different. Because you see the people, you feel the energy right. watching you while you're on stage, and it's it's a complete different different feeling. And it's, It's undescribable, honestly. Do you think it's that's why guys like Avicii and some other big time DJs don't know how to cope with that rush and that emotion, they, and they try and compensate with something? Yeah, I mean, it, it all comes together because I, I mean, I see it, you know, especially in in in, in LA and Hollywood, it's crazy out here, you know. Everyone just does drugs everywhere, you know. Like it's like in Germany, everyone's like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom, I have to be quiet, you know. Everyone just hears on the dance floor, you want some, and it's like even like after like performing that show like everyone comes to me is like yeah yeah i got everything for you what up man you're my brother like here do you want coke you want ecstasy you want this you know and obviously like I, i don't do drugs i don't drink i'm very like That's professional awesome. on this i've done all that you know i've had my time but my body can't handle it i'm now i've been focused for like two years now completely focused on music but i, I know what it feels like so it's It's, it's hard to resist because everyone gives you that attention of, oh, you're so dope, you're so cool, like, calm, let's do this. And, you know, in that situation, you feel cool, you know, like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm cool, like, I just performed, like, and then you have girls coming up to you and you're like, oh, my God, and like, and then you're like, yeah, come on, I try to do it, and then you're on drugs and you do 200 shows a year and this happens every night, like, what are you supposed to do, you know? If you don't have a good team or don't, if you don't know what you want, really, it's hard, you know? Yeah, and I think that that's the key word of like having a good team around you, right? Because if you really want to be successful and like live the best life, I think having that team around you that always builds you up, right? And makes yeah. you feel great and supported, but also keeps you humble in the best way possible of like, hey, like let's let's keep our eye on the prize, stay focused and like exactly. let's see the bigger picture. Yeah, that's it's really it's, cool. it's important to have a good team, you know? Like Avicii was an amazing talent, but he didn't get lucky, you know, probably, you know, it's, 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 it's hard, you know, it's hard to see, you know, there's, there's our DJs, like say Martin Garrix, you know, he had a very really good team around him who supported him. He stayed very humble, the nicest guy I've ever met. And, uh, you know, there's people who are very nice and have a good team and you, you, you feel that you feel mm -hmm. the people who are around you, you know, and I always try to say thank you in every situation, try to say humble, you know, and if I don't, you know, my team comes to me and be like, yo, you didn't say thank you, say thank you, stay humble, you know, and I'm like, you're right. Nice. You know, so. That's amazing, uh, yeah. yeah, not having yes men, right, that's around you, yeah. tell you what you want to hear. No, I, I want, think, yeah, exactly. Yeah, even just having that understanding and perspective is more than half the battle. Like you said, if you ever step out of line a little bit, they can tell you and at least you already understand like, oh shit, I do have that God complex coming through <laughs> yeah. or something, so that's no. impressive, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very important and I'm very thankful for it. Nice, But nice. I think too, like, so what's interesting is you have, you, you kind of just talked a lot about what you get from this, right? You get the mm -hmm. rush, you get, you get all these amazing feelings. 
But I've heard you say before that uh, one of your goals with this is to spread love and positivity through your music, which I think is interesting because it's a huge uh, through line to what we, we're doing with the app. Yeah. We are trying to, you know, we're trying to build a business, but at the heart of it, we're trying to spread love and positivity, right? And be genuine and intentional and all these words we always use. And I feel like that's something, you know, so you're not only getting all this from music and your, and your career, but you're giving, trying to give and spread all this stuff as well. Yeah, 100%. My next single is called uh, In Love With You. You know, it's very positive and it's very that high energy, like French house, happy feeling, uh, kind of like Daft Punk uh, as well. And uh, we actually have the Daft Punk people working on it as well. The guy who did Music Sounds Better With You. Music mm. Sounds Better With You. He's part of that record. And it's a very like happy, emotional, I'm in love. Everyone sings it feeling, you know, and it's, it's, it's cool. You know, I've been performing it and you feel the energy of it. People get happy, people get excited. And yeah. it's, it's an amazing feeling. That's awesome. Yeah, and I feel like if you, if you, whatever you're doing in a business, if you're leading with making your audience and your user base feel happy and welcome, the success is just going to come quicker and the money's going to come quicker because your intention is to not make money. Your intention is to build something that people yeah. actually enjoy and actually want to use and and live with. And if you go into like a business or you go into art trying to make money, you're forgetting the audience and then you're just going to be like a really quick you know, flash in the pan. That's what I always say. I've never done it for the money. I don't, I don't, of course, you know, my whole team, no, like everyone has to get paid, you know, but we all don't do it for the money. You know, my whole team is built around. We want to be on, we want to be the number one, you know, we want to achieve something. We want to do something like that, that's insane. You know, and we don't do it for the money. You know, the money comes, the money goes, the money comes. So for me, I love being on stage. I love making music. I'm, that's that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. And the money will be there, right? If you keep making the music for yeah. the right reasons, people will keep listening and if you're a good person, you're, the money will be there, right? So you don't 100%. have to worry about the money. No, I've never worried about money, you know. When I did Tarzan back then, and then when I was nine years old, you know, I didn't care about the money. I gave the money to to my parents because we didn't have a lot of money. I gave it to them because we needed to pay for the train ticket to drive there every weekend, you know. And then when I went into the boy band, you know, I just, like, obviously it was dumb. I just signed the contract because I wanted <laughs> to do it. I didn't want to make money of it. I wanted to do it, you know. So, yeah. Obviously, you, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I, that, that was it. <laughs> well, when you did Tarzan, right, nine years old, did you, like, once you got on stage, performed, did you instantly realize, like, I want to be an entertainer or performer in some capacity? Like, were you hooked instantly? Or did, did it take some time? Uh, I mean, when I was, like, eight, when I was in school, we had, um, like, what's it called, core? Sure. Like, yeah, core. When you, mm -hmm. like, sing in a group, yeah? yeah choir. Choir, uh, choir. Choir, exactly, choir. And um, I hated it. I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. I hate singing. What is this? Like, I was never into it. It was weird. My fam, my whole family's not into like that. No one does music or acting or anything, and I, I didn't like it for some reason. And I was at the beach, and um, they were casting for an ice cream commercial. And if you take pictures, you get a free ice cream. Me and my sister took a picture, got free ice cream. I was like, yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they called us. Yeah, you got the job. And I was like, what? So I got the job, and then Disney found the pictures and was like, oh. Uh, we want you to come out to Hamburg. It's like three hours away from where I lived uh, and apply, uh, try to apply for that um, musical show. It's in front of 1,800 people every day, basically. And um, yeah, we want you to audition for it. And we're like, okay, we're in Hamburg anyways. Why not go there? My mom was like, oh, he's not going to do it. He doesn't sing. Like, what is this? So I went there and they, after this, they called us and we're like, we want him. He's amazing, but he's already there. So usually the... Um, What's it called? Oh, I forgot the word. Usually, like, it takes one and a half years to get uh, through the whole thing. Oh, the, pro yeah, the process. The process, or? exactly. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, he has to do it in three months. Mm. I was like, what? He doesn't even sing. They were like, yeah, but he's, like, like kind of getting grown, uh, like, grown fast. So we need him to do this ASAP. And I was like, I want to do it. So I went there. We moved to Hamburg for three months. Basically, I did it in three, three months, the whole process. Every day, six days straight, eight hours training. I was like, I was nine. I was throwing wow. up in the bathroom while doing it. Like, it was it, it was a hard process. Like, doing backflips, singing, dancing, acting. Like, Holy it was shit. a whole, it was crazy. It's like Broadway. It was a Broadway show. So, uh, it was, but I loved it. Like, I never complained. I always loved it. But it was a hard process. I was still doing school at the same time. School in the morning, doing all this. And after this, I went on stage. I did that for two and a half years. And then uh, I moved back to, to my home island where I was born. Drove every weekend to Hamburg three hours to do the show every week for two and a half years. And 
Wow. I, I loved it. I still, I still dream about it sometimes. It's funny. Like I have this dream. I could, I really want to do it again. Like I would love to do it again. That is so cool. <laughs> what so you, I, good. I was going to say, I have a stupid question. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I listen to a lot of DJs, listen to a lot of music. When a DJ makes a song or a track, does he sing as part of that, I guess, song or is it just kind of instrumentals and putting things it together like outside it voices? depends you know usually djing is only producing but you know kevin harris was singing on his one on one was of his he? tracks yeah he was okay. singing um when i met you in the summer yeah. that's him singing that's him it. that's him singing oh, you know okay. he didn't make it a big thing but he's singing like i'm gonna be singing on some of my tracks you know i'm not a singer i don't i don't go anywhere and be like yeah sing i want to sing for you no i make music and if it fits and if, if it works you know it works there's so much good things and plugins and, and like how you can tune it these days. Like I was working uh, uh, with a Kanye West uh, team who did Donna, Jesus King, all the vocals. They were like, why don't you go in the booth? And I was like, okay. I go in, all of a sudden I sound like Don Tolliver and Travis Scott. And I was like, what? So <laughs> now I have a whole rap project as well. And we're like, hmm, this is dope. How do we release this, you know? So at some point I might be releasing some rap music where I'm rapping and singing as well in like two, three years, who knows? Very but cool. um I, I, I like it, you know, I don't think there's any boundaries, but usually, you know, like, say, like, Ivici or David Guetta, they don't sing all their tracks. They so just produce it. Oh, so it's essentially just producing all the sounds and the... Yeah, yeah, and they get, like, different lyrics. writers okay. and singers to come in and record, and they just put their name on it, and they DJ. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, being a DJ, you make the most money, and you get the most, like, without being fame, really. Like, if you go on the street right now, probably no one really, like would recognize, uh, like, obviously, I mean, you would rec I would recognize David Guetta, Martin Garrix, all these people, but I feel like some random people wouldn't recognize them, you mm. know, I don't know their names as well, but they make four hundred dollars to $800,000 for one hour DJing, and they do it 200 times a year. Yeah. And, and they get flying in with a private jet, and you get in the private jet, oh, what do you want? Oh, I want to eat sushi. I was like, okay. You because know, like, they're creating the vibe they're for creating hundreds the music, of thousands the of people. Pe yeah, it's insane. So, like, like, it's crazy, like the amount of what they do, like obviously it's stressful, but the amount of money those people get, it's insane. So you have guys like the mainstream people, Calvin Harris, Martin yeah. Garrix, Avicii, like people that I would know. Yeah. Who do you think, or as far as role models and more underground are like the the ones that people don't really know about that are actually the best? Um, That's a really cool guy coming up right now. His name is Mal P. He did, just did the song, because uh, I got my tracks from Amsterdam. Did, 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 did. I don't know if you guys heard it. Mm -hmm. uh, he's really popping right now. But I mean, like, he's been in the industry for a long time, you know? It takes one song. Like, I think he's, like, 26 right now. And uh, he's a really cool dude. And um, I, I love the song. But before, I, I haven't heard of him, you know? All of a sudden, he has that song, and he's everywhere. Playing every mm -hmm. main stage, flying everywhere, getting a lot of money, like, getting a lot of like, girls. He gets everything, you know? And he's been there probably for, like, what, seven years? You know, doing the same thing, but like on small stages. And it, you know, it takes one song. There was this guy who did the song Bounce, where did it drop, where did it yeah, lean, where did yeah. it. Uh, so, had 4,000 followers on Instagram. He has that one song. All of a sudden, he plays every main stage and makes one, 100 to $200,000 for one performance. Oof, wow. You know, that's yeah. what it takes. You know, it's just one, one song. And that's what, like, with an artist, you know, it takes a whole journey. journey. You need to perform, you need to process, you need to do all of this. A DJ barely, no one knows what you look like, and you just go on stage, plug in your USB. DJing is so easy, like today. Like everyone is trying to become a DJ right now. It is really easy with what you have. You know, you just obviously you have to know what, what is what. But you know, what real DJing was back then, like yeah. ten to twenty years ago, like with a vinyl and like you couldn't see the BPM. You really had to hear like here and like the needle was like jumping off the bass, going up and down, and there was crazy stuff that um like Def Punk. Like those were legends because what they did when they started, they took the needle like and like put it on the thing, like like slapping it on it and made like a bass sound and like synth sounds with the needles and stuff. And like that's real DJ. Like who does that still? No one. Yeah. So and that's DJing versus produ like real producer. Yeah, it's thing. crazy. Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting. You say like everybody's trying to become a DJ now, right? Yeah. Because with the app, people kept asking us like, "Oh, why are you getting into such a saturated industry?" Right? And it's like, well, can you tell me an industry that's not saturated? And then they're like, well, no, because literally every industry is saturated, right? So it's just kind of, if you could find a gap or some twist to make your industry a little bit better and you're consistent and passionate about mm -hmm. it, then that's the recipe for success because you're not going to find an industry that's not saturated because that's like a SpaceX or something where it's like yeah. one in a trillion chance and you're obviously going to be very successful because you created SpaceX like Elon Musk, but 
if you're passionate about what you're doing and create that gap or twist, you just stay consistent with it and you'll just be successful. Yeah, exactly. That's how that's it's it's consistency. That's what we always say, you know. I rather, you know, I've been with like big labels, I've been you know, I've tried it all and, and you know, the, it's consistency, you know. Now we're opening up our own label, we're releasing and we're getting all the content going. And you know, people in the beginning, no one wants to help. Yeah. No one everyone, especially like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. No one does anything, you know. We see that every day. Literally everyone's like oh, I want to help you with this, or you should do that, you should hire me to do this, and then yeah. you, you work with them for like a week or two, and it's like... Nothing oh, happens, everyone yeah. talks it, you know, so we as a team decided, you know, we got to do it ourselves, consistency, and it's going to bring you up. Yeah, Steve, we could say what Darwin told us about the uh, 1,000 people in LA. Oh, yeah, a guy that we, a friend of ours that we, you know, really trust and think has a lot of great ideas, he said something like, there's only really 1,000 people in LA that actually do things, and Everyone else just kind of talks and pretends, and yeah, and I, I, you know, I think on our based on our experience, we've seen that to be true in a lot of cases where most people will say they want to do stuff, say they want to help, and then when push comes to shove, not do anything. Everyone talks. I've been with so many people who are really, really big in the industry, and they're oh, we love this, let's do that, <laughs> let's do that. You know, we all get excited in the beginning. I was like, oh my god, this is it, this is it. That's actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a really 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 funny story that i have to I have to tell you real quick it just reminded Please. me of it um so everyone of, of course you guys know steve aoki right mm -hmm. yeah so I, I i my sister calls me and she goes like oh um steve aoki is following you i was like one and a half years ago oh no it was actually a year ago i think uh, i don't remember and uh, she goes steve aoki follows you and i was like really i don't even follow him that's funny <laughs> so i was like i guess i follow him i text him i was like here i got a song for us uh check it out Straight, you know, and he goes immediately responds. Oh, that's dope! I will check it out. Where's best to se uh, send songs? I want to make a record with you. And I was like, Oh my god, this is dope! <laughs> this is it! Like, this is gonna get like a million streams. Like, holy shit! Yeah, this is cool. So, uh, I I, uh, I was like, sending my email. He sends me four songs. I t uh, picked the best one, and that I liked. It was just like acapellas, basically. I take it, uh, but he didn't really say anything. What do you want me to do with it? I was like, What do you want me to do with it? He was like, Oh, just produce it. I was like, Okay. And um, I was like, what are you trying to go for right now? And he was like, yeah, like rock, like more into that and stuff. And I was like, okay. So we go into Hans Zimmer's studio. He's like a very big movie. Oh, Hans sound. Zimmer. Yeah. Come on. Crazy. One of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> so we go into his studio and we start recording live guitars, live drums, bass, make it like very cool rock, like very cool. And um, he gets all excited about it. I keep sending him videos of how we're in the studio, send him snippets. He's like, oh, this is going to be so dope. This is going to be sick. I can't wait. All of a sudden, he starts sending me videos like in, in the house. He's like, yo, what up, brother? Like, send me your number. Let's FaceTime. Like, I'm very excited. Let's do this, you know? And I'm like, uh, oh, my God. Like, this is crazy. I'm like, like this is dope. And then uh, <laughs> uh, we FaceTime. We get on FaceTime. He's like, yeah, what up, man? He's like, yeah, what up? Yeah, like, come to Vegas next week. You know, let's, let's hop on stage together um, on Friday. I was like, oh, my God. Like, this is getting crazier and crazier. And then um, we send him the song. He's like, oh, yeah, dope, dope, dope. And then <laughs> two days before the show, he goes, yo, I messed something up. I thought you were Jaden Hustler. Whoa. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is this is so funny. We've been talking with the management, with everyone as well. My literally my name says it everywhere. It was crazy, you know. We were pretty he was pretty chill about it. Like he was pretty cool. Like I was cool. Like I thought it was funny. He was like, uh, yeah, come uh, come to the show, you know, hang out, you know. But obviously, you know, back then I my my following everything wasn't that big, like was what? not big as it is right now. So like it didn't make any sense, you know. He was like, Yeah, we're gonna like if we release it, you know, obviously I'm going to get producer credits and stuff, but, uh, but didn't he like love everything you were doing up until that point? I, I loved it. But you know, it's like, obviously he wanted Jaden Hustler on it to sing on <laughs> wow. it. He didn't want okay. reproducing. He wanted right. singing on it. And he was like, yo, my bad. I'm sorry. I've been on tour <laughs> for like 200 days straight, you know, totally messed it up. I'd barely look at my Instagram, you know, I have a big team working around it and stuff. So, uh, it, it was pretty funny. I went back to the show. We hugged, we talked, you know, we're cool. I had and stuff. no idea where that story was But it was going funny. I was like, at least, funny. at least Steve Aoki knows now who I am. You know? yeah. so I was like, That's amazing. That was very funny. That's hilarious. Um, all right. So we got the story of you, amazing story of DJing, but I want to turn that into dating and girls now. Right? Yeah. So do you want to throw up some questions about yeah. that? Yeah. Um, well, I guess I was thinking like, you know, how is dating for you? Because I feel like on the one hand, someone has to be compatible with your lifestyle, right? And support you and accept you for it and realize you're probably traveling a lot and doing all these things. 
And on the other hand, it's like you have to find someone who wants you for you and not wants to just sleep with the DJ type yeah. of thing, right? So is it, has it been challenging? I mean, like, you know, like the fi- last four and a half, five years, I dated two girls. Um, at the and- same time? No. <laughs> At the same time, <laughs> no, uh, it was like two year, two and a half years with that one girl, and then I started another relationship one and a half years. And uh, but the first girlfriend, you know, it was like right when I actually started working with my manager, who I work with right now, and um, she was in the music industry. We were friends before, you know. She was older. I was seventeen. She was twenty nine. Mm, wow. You know, yeah. And it's like my dad was like high five. <laughs> 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 and um, but at the end, I was like, Jaden, what are you doing? You know, like she wants to uh, have kids and all that. And I was like, No, nah, I'm in love. It's my I first love. Yeah. yeah, you know. So it's like it, it got really crazy because I put love over music when I was 17. You know, I was 17. I was stupid. I was young. You know, it was my first love. So. It was getting getting all very successful. Like I was playing ten thousand people festivals here and there. We had Universal, Warner involved, all of that. My manager goes like, "Yo, she can't be there all the time. She's twenty nine, bro. What are you doing? Like, you know, you got to focus. You got to be singing. You got to do all this. You know, this is gonna take off. Like with the stuff we're doing." And I was like, "If she can't be there, I don't want to do it." You know, and we quit working mm-hmm. because of that. And I went back to Germany and started living with her. Mm. You know, if I think about it, that right now, yeah, obviously I was in love. You know, and everything happens for a reason. Uh, but it, it, it was stupid, you know? But then in those four years, I really developed myself. Like I started working on, on, on production skills. I really learned how to DJ because when we started DJing, I barely got into DJing. I was playing shows in front of 10,000 people and couldn't DJ. I was like basically Millie Vanilli uh, 37, you know, yeah. uh, not able to DJ. Now I know how to DJ with four turntables. I went through bad stuff. I slept in cars. I went all this, you know, I did all the bad stuff. And I went to different managements and no one really understood me. And I went back to my manager and uh, we we, uh, we resigned after that, you know. Mm. We were like, all right, I've been through it. I know what I want now, you know. And now I focus really on my music, you know. And I always will put music right now for the next five years over love. And uh, I'm not trying to try to get in a relationship right now. Um, I do like going out with girls. I'm not like the guy who like, likes to do one night stands, you know. Yeah. I, I, I like to have a girl, you know, like to talk with her. Like, because usually, you know, like as it, it, stupid as it sounds, you know, I when I like, you know, be with a girl and after I'm like, all right, I want to make music you now. Can you please leave? You know, I don't like that. I don't like to be rude, you know. So I want a girl that I can actually really talk to and hangs out, you know. I like having girls around, you know. And if they want to chill in their living room while I make music, you know, go ahead, you know. The muse. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, awesome. We, uh, I have a really close friend, and he's a really big-time artist, right? And he, he lives and dies by his art, right? He wakes up, wants to paint, and he paints for like hours a day, right? And he was in this relationship with somebody, and he stopped painting. And he got so stressed and so unhealthy and the stresses of his relationship took him away from the painting, right? Mm. And he would come to me and ask me about this and they eventually broke up and I said, you need to find somebody who doesn't take you away from your passion, right? Because that's who you are as a person. So you want to find somebody who feeds and builds your passion and doesn't make you choose between them and what you're doing. And if, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you can't focus on being a DJ or you can't focus on your art you know, that's clearly not the person for you because essentially you're just losing who you are as a person. So I think that's super it's 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 very awareness. It's you know? it's very hard. You know, my, my second girlfriend, she broke up with me because she couldn't handle it. You know, I was always like, I'm always loyal. I told her that if I'm in a relationship, I date to marry. You know, I don't date someone. It takes me a, r- a long time to fall in love with someone really, really hard. And my second uh, girlfriend, you know, I, I was with her for like two years. And I uh, had her living at my parents' house while her, uh, her parents didn't want her, you know. And I took care of her, you know. I always texted her, FaceTimed her, even though I did my music, you know, and stuff. And it got to the point where she was like, it was actually last, I think it was last August. And um, she was like, yeah, I can't handle it anymore. Um, I was like, what do you mean? Like, I literally just bought your plane ticket to, to, um, to come to L.A. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're just going to throw everything away. I, like, I was, re- I was really in love, you know. And um, she was like, yeah, I'm done. And two weeks later, she dates another guy. And I was like, wow. Mm. I was like, that's crazy. And uh, I was really upset, you know. But in that time, I made great music, you know. I was, I was so sad. I was cr- like, I was crying. I was like, yeah. uh, I was you, like. You used it as fuel. Yeah, exactly. I was in the, went in the studio, made super emotional, sad songs. And, you know, maybe that would have never, I would have never made those songs if, you know, if that wouldn't have happened. You know, but uh, after that, I decided right now in the next three, four, five years, I'm going to focus on my career, my music, you know, and 
when I'm like 27, 28, I, I, you know, the right woman, woman will come and then I can focus on, on, on getting married at some point, you know, but right now it's very hard, you know, when I tour around and all this stuff is going to take off and you fly around, you do 200 shows around the world, you know, how are you supposed to take care of a girl if there's hundreds of girls coming up to you all the time, left and right, you know, and it's so stressful, you know. Like sometimes I don't even know where I am. You know, I'm like, uh, where am I? You know, and it's like, uh, it's like, how am I supposed to call a, a woman all the time? You know, or have her with me? And like, it, it's hard. You know, if it will happen, it happen. I don't yeah. really think about it. And, and you, you'll also need somebody who is big on trust, right? Because if you're with somebody, and you're in love with them, you can only give them your word because, like you said, you're gonna be doing these tours all over the world. Yeah, and you're gonna have tons of women flocking to you. And that trust is going to be super important. It's very important you. because, you know, the woman the woman gets jealous as well, you know. And right. all of a sudden she thinks, oh, he's not good with girls. I go out with guys, you know. And that comes back to me. And I'm like, I hear, oh, she went out with guys. And I'm like, what? No, oh, I'm getting stupid, you know, that might affect my career and my music, you know. So right now that that, that can't happen, you know. Like, um, I don't really get that attached to, to anyone that quickly. You know, it takes yeah. me a long time. Like, it took me a year to fall in love with my second girlfriend. You know, I was still, like, seeing her and dating her, but... Like falling in love is a big thing for me, you know. And sure. uh, right now, I don't, I don't really focus on it. Of course, I go on dates, you know, <laughs> with girls, and uh, and you know, it's fun. You know, you need the you need the balance of it. Yeah, yeah. and we, we talk a lot about that on various episodes, right? Having putting your mission first, right, and then in turn, I think that makes you more attractive to somebody, right? If you yeah. have your goals and you have something that you're working towards, and the relationship, not that it's secondary, but you always have your mission at, at like whatever you're working towards at the core, right? And then the relationship is a nice compliment. And hopefully your partner has the same thing where they have their mission and the relationship is also complementary to that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what it is. It's a two way thing, you know, it's on both sides and it's uh it's also hard, you know, having someone in, in a, like when you get to that point, if you reach like a, like a certain level, you know, there's always the girls coming to you and, and I've been seeing it, I've been seeing it now because uh, two years ago when I was in LA, no one really cared. No one cared. It was like, it was so hard to get girls out here. I was like, damn, this is different than Germany. Like, like you need money, you need fame. Like, otherwise the girls don't care. It's really like that. You know, there's all, there, there is girls who, who don't care, obviously, yeah. but most of the time it's it's what the girls get attracted to you know the girls want you to pay for the food it's like it's the normal thing like it's crazy out here and we did a show uh, on a rooftop in Merrill's it's called Merrill's Place and we did our own event and we invited a lot of celebrities we put like a a Aiden actually filmed it um, mm. and uh, we put like six red cameras everywhere did a red carpet put like high end invited only celebrities it was crazy it was like the, it was shut down by 9 p.m. because it was too many people wow. outside um, like the, like the guest list was shut up, shut down, and uh, the event was crazy. And after that, I saw everything really change because all of a sudden, girls were coming from left and right, and were like trying to go out with me. And I was like, I've known you for a year. Mm. It's like now you notice me. I'm like, I was like, I don't care. It's LA, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. but like still, it's crazy. You know, the yeah. girls really either have fame or have money, and and then it's very very easy. It's like entourage. It's basically like what Vinny Chase and entourage goes through. Like. It's exactly, this is LA. It's exactly what they describe. It, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's fun. You know, I don't, since I'm not in a relationship right now, I enjoy it. You know, I focus on my music and when, when we go out, you know, I'll bring my friends and uh, we have fun. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure you don't need to, but do you ever dabble in the dating app world? Uh, I, I've been, but it, I was younger. I was like probably like 14, 15. In Europe? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I was on, I was on Tinder before when I was like 14, 15, but yeah. now I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't do that, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, it'd be interesting to actually do it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, LA is a dating app in itself, right? Like we're saying. You yeah. Know, you go out, you perform a gig, you have hundreds of people that you could choose from. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because, like you said, the mentality in LA is who's the next best thing, right? Oh, Jaden's a successful DJ. I love Jaden. And then the next night you meet Martin Garrix, like, oh, well, Sorry, Jaden, I met Martin Garrix tonight. It's like, oh, okay. It's right. really like that. You know, you plan an event with like a big party bus and get all the girls like, come out, come out, you know, and then and all of a sudden, oh, I got this. Oh, I got this. They're always like flake here and left and right. And it's it's like, especially here in, in, in LA, like you never know if they show up till they show up. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> and we always talk about one thing we say all the time from a, it works for a business perspective, works from like, a, you know, getting women perspectives. We say attract, don't chase. Right. So mm -hmm. like you're saying, like if you, you know, if we're trying to attract, uh, chase all these business partners and they're telling, they're not even either not answering us or telling us no, 
we always say like if we build ourselves up to the point where they're going to come to us mm -hmm. and it works the same way with women, you know, whether or not you're attracting the right type of person after you, you know, if they want you for the right reasons, but that's what we found where we find to be the most helpful is like building ourselves up, building the app up. And then people start coming to us with opportunities. 100%. You got to do what you do, you know, and it's really like playing a game. You know, I feel like a lot of guys out here because a lot of girls were like, why are you like, so not like, why, why don't you text me? Why don't you do this? I'm like, well, I don't really text. Like, I'm so busy with making music. I was like, just come over, you know, if you want to hang out, come over. But, you know, FaceTime me, but I don't really text. And the, the, that's how all the girls are usually, but they're not used to it, you know. A lot of guys are, like, texting, then they get upset if, if they don't answer. I'll be like, yeah, I don't like her. She doesn't answer me. She's used with someone else. And I'm really like, I don't really care. I'm like, I, I really focus on my music and not, not not to be mean in a bad way or anything. I, I like hanging out with, with, with girls, you know, but if you, if you want to hang out, just come over. You know, my house is an open door, you know. <laughs> so... Uh, and I feel like the girls really like that, to be honest, because I'm not really pushing in any direction mm. of forcing anything. Oh, I want to be with you. I want to do this. Yo, I love you so much. I just, I'm not really needing. like, I'm always nice, you know? I'm always trying to be nice and have a good time. But I, I got my thing going on, you know? If you want to be part of it, be around. If yeah. not, don't. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think you kind of nailed what we're trying to do as far as our demographic for the app, right? Like you're a really cool, successful DJ who, like you said, you don't have time to text, right? Yeah. And when a girl's interested in you, you're like, hey, like, if you want to hang out, let's hang out. And, you know, if not, we won't. So that's what we're trying to do with the app in a way where you don't spend all this time texting where someone gets upset that someone didn't answer mm -hmm. or you become pen pals for a while. You just say, hey, like, if you want to go for a drink with me, let's go for a drink and we'll have a good time. And then we don't know what could happen. But if not, whatever, like, we'll just stay with our busy lives. Exactly. Like, uh like, that's the thing. Like, uh, I have some friends who get really, like, obsessed with girls. And they're like, oh, I love her so much. And they're all the phone all the time. And I was like, I've been there too. Like, I feel like everyone has to go through that experience because mm. otherwise you won't learn. And I I've been, like, with, with two girlfriends. I had a relationship. I had breakups. And, you know, right now, for me, it's like, I, I think I understand the of how it works with girls really, really well. And that's why it's been really going good, to be honest, I think, because... If you give them the feeling they you don't want them, they want you. Mm -hmm. They always want, you know? I mean, like, guys are the same. If we always want yeah. what we don't have, you know? And you have to play the exact same game that the girls play with you. You know, make yourself rare, but... Be, be nice be a nice asshole like sometimes you know <laughs> <That's> great, <right? laughs> yeah. like yep. like don't be an asshole but like you have to be sometimes but like not in a like asshole way more in a, like in a nice way you know be a gentleman and say thank you and be nice and you know but still be rare yeah nice. so when you do date what does an ideal first date look like uh, it really depends, you know. I always, I always like the idea of, you know, I'm gonna take you to McDonald's first, and then if I know you're cool, I'm gonna take you on a nice date. But that just doesn't work out here, yeah. you know. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it depends on if I want to find a girlfriend or if I just go out on dates mm -hmm. with, you know, to date or you know, we see where it goes, you know, because out here. Girls just want to go on a nice day. They want to go to a nice restaurant. They want you to pay for them. It's just normal. Some girls don't even say thank you anymore where I'm like, wow, that's crazy. But I guess it's LA. So, I mean, for me, I like doing cool stuff, you know? But I like doing going on trips, doing all that. But for a first date, you know, I, would, I wouldn't recommend going to the movies because you just don't talk. It's right. like very like, hey, let's meet up. Hey, how are you? Good. All right, bye. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, it's probably just in LA in a restaurant wherever you are. You know, I, I feel like going out together would be cool. I also, I also recommend you know being friends first is the best thing that actually can happen to you because it really makes you fall in love even more and care about the person. Because that's how I did it when I was with my two girlfriends. We were actually friends uh, before we started dating. Like my first girlfriend, I was with her friends for a year even before we started dating we haven't even kissed i was like we're dating now she's like okay and then we <laughs> kissed you know so and and i think that tension builds up at some point you know and i i think marrying your best friend is the best thing you can do 100 percent. yeah so because you know it's not about like i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. no yeah. that makes sense yeah steve always says that too because at the end of the day you're you're only gonna have so much chemistry not only throughout the day but throughout your life right and you need to fill all that other time up with the person you're with yeah and if you're best friends it's so easy right you could you could be in silence you could watch tv you could play games you could actually exactly. enjoy their company where it's not so much based off of like 
a lust for sex or a lust for chemistry yeah. or some dependence. It's like, no, you're my friend. I love you as my friend, but I'm also really attracted to you. Yeah. And it just makes for like a more beautiful relationship. It's way more beautiful. You know, that's, that's what feels amazing. You know, the other thing is like, you know, sex is amazing, but you know, uh, you can also do it different ways, you know? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> that's for me the thing. Like, that's why I like getting to know the girl more with, so I can also hang out with her. You know? Yeah, sure. it's like, do you want to hang out with this person right after sex? Is always a big indicator for me. Yeah, right? like as soon as it's over, do I want this person still around? Exactly. Or not? Exactly. Yeah. That's a that's the biggest issue for guys. I feel like girls are different with that, but you know, I'm not a girl, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any uh, like common red flags that you see, like being in your position, right? I'm sure you get approached by a lot of women, like we said. Do you ha do you see any patterns that come up where it's like, all right, I know immediately that this this chick is not. Good news. Yeah, I think that's one big one because I've been raised like that and my manager really always tells me to say thank you and since I've been doing it, I've been noticing it more. It's really like, like I don't I don't care if I have to pay, you know? I like obviously, you know, if I take you on a date, I pay. But like, or even like I pay for girlfriends, hey, you guys want to drink? Yeah, of course. But like saying thank you is the least you can do. And I really appreciate when people say, say thank you. So for me, if a girl says thank you, that was really nice. I really appreciate that. And of course I will do it again, you know. Mm -hmm. But if a girl really doesn't uh, do that, like say like we were on a, I was invited to a birthday dinner with like 12 people. And um, this girl, it's her birthday, we get invited. And in Germany, it's normal if you get invited to a birthday, the birthday person pays. I don't care. Like I pay for myself. Even if like I don't care. But like <laughs> that night, uh, she was like, um, "No, I think one of the guys goes. I think all the boys should pay." And I was like, "What?" The birthday girl said this. No, I think I don't know if it was a birthday girl. Or the guy said it. Someone said it. And then I was like, "I think all the boys should pay." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> and I was like, "It's your birth." I like I didn't say it. I was like, "I was like, okay, I, I have to play along." We're in LA. I was like, "Okay, how much?" So I was like, "I think it was like three grand or something." We split it through five guys. Then everyone puts the money in. I'm like. Okay, it's fine. It's her birthday. It's her birthday present. Whatever. I was supposed to like DJ that night. She was like, "Can you please DJ my birthday?" I was like, "If it's cool, I DJ. It's a special gift, right?" But after we left that dinner, she didn't even say thank you. Yeah. I was like, "What?" I was like, "That is so rude." I was like, "I don't care if I have to pay, but like at least say thank you. You want me to DJ your birthday party as a like as a gift thing, but then you make me pay for dinner and you want me to DJ." I was like, "Hell no!" I was yeah. like, "That was such a red flag that I was like, I'm not really interested because I really liked that girl. I thought she was cute, but after that, I was like, that's not the type of girl like I want to be around said, with." Right? Like a thank you, just a, a genuine thank you. Exactly. It's literally exactly. all that's asked and can go such a long way. Yes. And. Yeah, I think that's a huge, I, I, I really don't like to use the term red flag, but I think that is a red flag because that's just the way that person's going to probably operate on every level Yeah. because that's the that's the lowest level to operate is just saying thank you. Yes. And I had a similar story. I met someone in LA my first week here, just casually, right, as friends. She had a birthday party and invited me, right? And I show up and there's like six people there and I was like, why is she inviting me? Like, I don't even know her. <laughs> so we're at this intimate thing where I'm there as a friend. There's me and another guy, four girls. And we're at uh, Nobu in Malibu, right? So I'm like, okay, it's going to be expensive, but whatever. Uh, the bill comes and I tell the guy, I was like, hey, like, you know, it's her birthday. I felt bad because she invited me. So she probably didn't have a lot of real friends. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, let's split it. So we split it. And I was like, oh, this is going to be nice. She's going to feel so, she's going to feel so happy and appreciate what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. We, Me and this guy split it. She just walked out the restaurant. And I was just like, again, it all you had to do was just say, wow, Joe, thank <laughs> yeah. you so much for coming. And for paying for my lunch, I don't even know me. Yeah. No. yeah. It's exactly. entitlement. It's expectation. It's, it's bad. It's crazy. And I think, you know, for me, on the one hand, I like to, in my mind, right, I like to do things without any expectation, right? I don't like to, I don't want to, I don't do think, something expecting a thank you. But if I don't hear one, then it'll probably, like, change my mind about the person or prevent me from doing it again type yeah. of thing. 100%. And again, someone could always forget if it's, like, a weird situation. But, like, you can tell, in general, if they are grateful or not. Even if they don't say it. Yeah. It's yeah. very rare to find actually out here, to be honest. It's hard. I've been, I've met some girls who said thank you. So I've been noticing it, and then noticing it, sorry. And uh, I was like, wow, yeah. first time. And it makes you feel really good, right? It yeah. It makes, makes you, you feel... more attracted to them. Yeah. And it's also like, you know, like it's not about the money or whatever, you know, how he said, it's about being thankful, you know, to people. Because if you say thank you to people, it makes people happy, you know, and mm. being thankful is a good thing, I think. Love that. Have you found, I'm not going to disclose where you live, obviously, but have you found moving out of like the heart of the LA, like we always talk about like Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, like being like the core of this, like, like kind of weird culture of 
you know, shiny objects. Have you found that like not living there has, have you met different types of women where you kind of where you live now, even though it's so close? Uh, or have you not been able to tell like from the areas out here in LA yeah versus like so like the heart like Beverly Hills was Hollywood versus Mm -hmm. where you live now have you seen like a different type Um, I mean I still go to the same places I drive so much around every day and um but like you know it it, it really depends you know like I think there's different areas and but I feel overall you know you meet the same people every time you know I think everyone knows each other out here and it's like it's it's also funny because every time I speak to my friends they're like I was like, oh, I'm going out with this girl. And I'm like, eh. I say, I'm going out with this girl. And he's like, eh, I've been with her. I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, do you mind? He's like, no, it's LA. I was like, oh, this is weird. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. That, that type of thing happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, you know, when you were in, in, when I was in Germany back then, it's like always like these celebrities, you know, that pass each other around, you know? But that's just how it is out here, you know? It's like, what else are you supposed to do? Everyone lives here and everyone has been with each other. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, do you have a dream gig, like top of your bucket list, like that you want to perform at? I mean, there, there's a couple, you know, for DJs, you know, the biggest thing, you know, is Tomorrowland in, in Belgium. Uh, obviously I, I, I've just been to ultra with Swedish house mafia. Um, that was really, really insane. So that would be one of my bucket lists. I mean, obviously Coachella would be cool. There's a lot of things, you know, there's so many festivals out there. Mm-hmm it's insane. I think that's probably like six, like six to 10,000 festivals a year. Wow. wow. How are you supposed What's to do What's the biggest one you've done? Biggest one was in Cyprus, I think 15,000 people. Um, right. uh, it's an island in Greece. Um, that was pretty, pretty huge. I did another one with uh, 10,000 people in Germany, uh, Perukaville. Um, I've done a couple here and there, but I've, right now I've been cutting down my gigs since I've moved to LA as well. Like, it doesn't make sense to me to fly around, do all these gigs for like a couple thousand dollars right now, you know? Because mm-hmm. for me, how I said, I, I don't do it about the money, you know? Mm-hmm. I want to reach the top point. How to reach this? Your number one hit. So right yeah. now, I've been just in the studio the last couple of weeks and the next months, uh, focusing on, because I have a thousand songs on my laptop. And my manager always goes, you need to finish this. And I'm, well, once I finish it, I'm like, I'm already starting a new one. He's like, don't start a new one, finish this one. <laughs> so we got so many, so many records I need to finish right now. We're basically going shopping with labels. We just opened up our own label. We're just going to start releasing, releasing, releasing. We just put a crazy team together with some people f- from Spotify and, and with some really, really good people behind it. So, you know, I think we're going in the right direction. The next step is to get a number one, one hit on the radio because that way we step like, step the part where you're not playing the main stage yeah. headlining to, at times because we got we got a lot of cool things in mind that we want to do you know we want to do crazy crazy things like i feel lot. it coming i yeah. feel it coming for what sure what about a dream collab anyone you want to get to maybe sing on a track or mm, i would on? love to collab with drake one day um i would you know i always set myself like a high you know people yeah. always think like oh drake you know he's big man <laughs> like uh you know i gotta I have a vision, I have a dream, you know, and I work for that dream and I will achieve that one day. And uh, I think Drake be crazy. Uh, obviously, I, my one of my favorite DJs is always David Guetta. I looked up to him. So David Guetta, Switch House Mafia is cool in the DJ scene. Um, I love ASAP. I, I actually made uh, two, three songs that we actually want to pitch at ASAP right now. They're crazy. Um, I love Rihanna. I made a whole album. We have a singer. She writes for Chris Brown. She sounds exactly like Rihanna. Exactly. So every time I show these songs to people, they're like, wait, is this Rihanna? Wow. So we're like, yeah, we're at some point, and when the time is right, we send all these tracks to different different people, you know, because I also want to produce for other people. And uh, since I do rock, hip hop, house, I do all kinds of music. So. But that's you know. also like like Calvin Harris, right? When he worked with Rihanna, like early, she was much younger. So that could yeah. be like, you, you guys could be that next version of those two yeah you know it has to be the right way you know i don't want like i don't force anything you know if it happens it happens you're in the right timing you know it will happen but Mm -hmm. it has to be in the right way and i think that's a beautiful mindset of you know people saying oh don't think so big like oh drake's so big i think that you should think the biggest that you could possibly think because you don't know what you're capable of right yeah so if you think that you could achieve the tippy tippy top then most likely you will because you're going to embark on that journey. So I think that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and one of my favorite uh, business guys that I always probably tell you about is Alex Hormozzi, right? And he says if you 
try to solve like a hundred thousand dollar problem, you're only going to come up with hundred thousand dollar solutions. And if you try to solve, solve like a hundred million dollar problem, you're going to come up with those solutions. So thinking big is going to help you to, you know, come up with ways to actually work with Drake as opposed to setting a lower bar and just meeting that. So yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. So I'm gonna hit you with some rapid fire, which we call our speed dating rapid fire hot seat interrogation round. All right. Um, okay. So what is the best thing that happened to you today? The best thing that happened to me today was that I don't have to drive here. I had my friend actually p pick me up and drive me. He's basically <laughs> like, uh, well, we hired him as a driver. He's one of my best friends, but you know, I like to have my friends around as a team. So like entourage, he's like turtle. Yes. <laughs> nice. Shout out Joe. Shout out Joe. <laughs> Uh, what is the best compliment you've ever received? Best compliment I've ever received is, I mean, it's hard to be honest. I think that I'm very handsome, I guess. I don't know. Cool. That works. <laughs> uh, favorite date spot? Favorite date spot out here in LA? Sure. Or, or wherever you want. Um, I would say Ushuaia, Ibiza. Ugh, I love okay. that place. Okay. Amazing uh, beach club out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you're a movie person, but favorite romantic comedy? Favorite romantic comedy? Oh, God. Oh, I don't even know. I, I, my favorite romantic movie is t uh, Titanic. Oh, but, nice. uh, Classic. You look uh, like Leo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't date Leo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw him the other week. Uh, no, last week. Uh, there's a club called Off Sunset. It's a secret celebrity club uh, where people go to. The, you're not allowed to take pictures. And um, Gio, the guy who's with me today, uh, he was like, yo, 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 look left, look left. And I was <laughs> like, what's left? And he was like, Leo all of a sudden sits next to me. I was like, oh, yeah, it's Leo. <laughs> <laughs> um, a movie that made you cry other than Titanic? Um, Titanic actually made me cry. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got all of us, I think. Um, made me cry. I think The Notebook. Okay. Hmm. Maybe. For sure. Like, sometimes I watch these type of music, uh, music, movies, like, like especially after, like, I broke up, and, like, in my relationships, you know, watch these movies to get it all out, you know. I usually don't cry, but, you know, sometimes, you know, men have to cry. You're Boy. dropping some classics here. Yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> I've been with some good girls, you know. They know <laughs> what they're watching. <laughs> Most played song on your Spotify? Most played song on my Spotify? Uh, my own songs or just in general? In general. Um, I have different playlists. I make all kinds of plays in different directions, but uh, I like uh, Lil Uzi. I just want to rock, rock. That one's cool. The hip-hop side. Um, house one. I play that new one from Fred again, Skrillex, Baby Again right now. Mm. Um, or Rat Tata from Skrillex. It's going to beat the girl, Rat Tata. Okay. That, that one's cool. Um I listen to all kinds of music. I could even drop, like, my favorite music is Motley Crue, you know? Yeah. Like, sometimes we go and just listen to Motley Crue. <laughs> so it's like I listen to everything. Well, nice. similar, similar question. What's your go-to karaoke song? Go-to karaoke song. I don't know. There's only one way to say, I think. High School Musical, that one song that, where they opened up. It's a bright karaoke song, Love right? It. Love it. You're okay. just breaking even, hearts right now. I, I, the I Titanic, even, High School Musical. I don't even know what, what the name is of it. Uh, we're breaking free song. Yeah. I'm not sure the name of it either. I don't know what it is, but, you know. Uh, if you could have a drink with anyone living or dead, who would it be? What again? Sorry? If you could have a drink with anybody oh. living or dead. Elvis Presley. Ooh, okay. Elvis is back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. actually just made a song called Elvis is back. Because we're like, I love Elvis, and it's a very cool, very cool track. Sweet. Nice. Uh, do you have a favorite quote or mantra or something you live by? Mm, money comes and goes. Uh, okay. All right. So we usually do a marry, fuck, kill. So this is going to be a slightly different. It's going to be listen, open, kill, right? So there's one person you can listen to their music forever, one person you can open for, but never listen to again, and then one person you got to kill their music. All right, so Martin Garrix. What do you mean open? So open. you can you can open for them at a show. Okay, okay, right. Okay. So you can open for them, or you can listen to the their okay, music. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. it's Martin Garrix, David Guetta, or Tiesto. For a listen. Yeah, you got to pick one of each. So one you can never listen to again. Okay, I got it already. So I listen to Martin Garrix. Okay. Perform with David Guetta and kill Tiesto. Okay. No, <laughs> no offense. No, no offense. I love Tiesto. You know, he's a legend. But uh, you know, my favorite DJs. Well, I got inspired was Martin Garrix and David Guetta. So makes sense. You know. But it would be also cool to DJ with David Martin Gags. But if I have to say, I'll yeah, probably DJ with David Keller. <laughs> okay. Uh, what advice would you give to 18-year-old Jaden? 18-year-old Jaden, be patient. You know, don't don't force anything. Because I was always like, oh, what's the next thing? Was I'm like trying to do all these things, you know. But I think everything happens for everything happens for a reason. So, you know, I would I don't regret anything. You know, I've done stupid stuff like. 
I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've done drugs in the past, you know. I've, I've, I've done that when I was super young and it fucked me mentally, like, like healthy really, really bad, you know. But I've learned from it and now I'm super healthy because I, do, I don't do anything, you know. And it wouldn't have gotten me to that point, you know, in my life because now I can tour around, go to party. I still party at 8 a.m. I have <laughs> fun. I run off energy. So for me, not doing all these things, waking up the next day and feeling healthy and going to the gym and doing all that is amazing, mm -hmm. you know. So if I wouldn't have done that, maybe I would have gotten into drugs now or later and you know, too died late. at some yeah, point, you know, late. so yeah. everything happens for a reason and, and just be patient. Everything is going to come at the right time and God has a plan. That was beautiful. Last one. What does love mean to you? Love means two person being with each other and, you know, doing everything they possibly can to have the greatest life they can have together. Yeah. Love nice. it. Uh, and Joe's got a favorite. Oh, yeah. If you could have one law in the world that everybody had to follow, what law would it be? It could be any law, crazy as you want it to be. No hate. No hate. You know, like, love each other, you know? Be, be like, like no wars or whatever, you know? That's, that's so stupid. It's all about money and all that, you know? And if everyone be nice, you know, if everyone be love, if everyone would love each other, you know, I don't know what it would look like because I can't imagine it. You know, the world's crazy. But I think that'd be something that I would really like. That's awesome. Love that. Um, all right. So you have a lot going on. What's next in terms of what people can expect from you in terms maybe songs or performances? What's coming up uh, real soon? Or there's the next, next couple months. There's a lot of stuff actually coming up. We just filmed a very amazing live set uh, in a $150 million house in Bel Air. Uh, with like drone shots, it's like a 50 minute live set of me DJing, playing the piano, singing to it. Like it's, it's very, very cool, very artsy. Then I have my next singer coming out, Message. It's coming out, I think right now, to be honest. And then uh, we have the next big one that I just did with the Def Punk crew with Alain Bro and uh, Thomas Bangald and then and all of them. And it's called In Love With You. It's coming out uh, July 23rd, I think. Um, after that, because we're just going to drop now. We're going to drop music, music, nice. music. We're free music videos. I'm uh, going to Ibiza in mid-June. Um, there's so much happening. But, uh, you know, you, you can't really plan anything because what if one of the singles takes off, you know? Yeah. You know, then everything is going to change. And I'm very excited for it. I'm very happy all of these things are coming out. Very happy. I have a good team around me. I have my friends around me. And it's it's going to be a fun journey. Amazing. And where can people find you on social media or online? Uh, they can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, TikTok, under Jaden Boysen, J-A-D-E-N-B-O-J-S-E-N. Yeah. Cool. All right. Jaden, man, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Thank you guys yeah, for having me. You, I really enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Thank you. you. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at First Rounds on Joe, at Steve Ross at our underscore, and most importantly, at First Rounds on me. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching or listening. We'll see you next time. For now, check out one of our past episodes.